വാസെറ്റ് വാസെറ്റ് സുത്ത് ദിസ് ഹാവ് ഐ ഹേർഡ് ഓൺ വൺ ഒക്കേഷൻ ദ ബ്ലിസ് ഇൻ വാർഡൻ വാസ് ബിലിങ് അറ്റ് ഇച്ചാനാൻ ഗല ഇൻ എ വുഡ് ലൻഡ് ഗ്രോ നിയർ ഇച്ചാനാൻ ഗല നൗ ഓൺ ദാറ്റ് ഒക്കേഷൻ എ നമ്പർ ഓഫ് വെരി വെൽ നോൺ എ ഫ്ലൂ ഇൻ ഡ്രാഫിൻസ് വാസ് സ്റ്റേയിങ് അറ്റ് ഇച്ചാനാൻ ഗല ദ റീസ് ദ ഡ്രാഫിൻ ചാങ്കി ദ ഡ്രാഫിൻ താറുക്ക് ദ ഡ്രാഫിൻ ഫൊക്കർ സാതി ദ ഡ്രാഫിൻ ജാനു സോണി ദ ഡ്രാഫിൻ തോതേയ and other very well known affluent brahmins then while the brahmin student was sat and bath was of walking and wandering for exercise this chance conversation arose between them how sir is one a brahmin the brahmin student bajwad said when one is well born on both his maternal and paternal sides of pure descent as far back as the seventh generation of the ancestors and as able and impeccable with respect to birth then one is a brahmin the brahmin student was said to said when one is of good behavior and proficient in the observances then one is a brahmin but bharadwaj could not convince was it no could was it convince bharadwaj then the brahmin student was it addressed the brahmin student bharadwaj good bharadwaj is as it go to me the son of the sarkens who went forth from a sarken clan is dwelling at ichanan gala in the woodland grove near ichanan gala now a good report about that master go to me has circulated this the blessed one is an arahant perfectly enlightened accomplished in clear knowledge and conduct fortunate knower of the world and a fast trainer of persons to be tamed teacher of devas and humans the enlightened one the blessed one come good brother vaja let us go to the ascetic gotham and ask him about this matter as he answers so we will retain it in mind yes sir the brahmin student bharadwaja replied but the brahmin student vasit and bharadwaja went to the blessed one and exchanged greetings with him when they had concluded their greetings and cordial talk they sat down to one side the brahmin student was it to then address the blessed one in verses thus followed we are both acknowledge to possess the knowledge we claim of three vedas farm for krasati is pupil and he is a pupil of taruka we are consumed in what is taught by the experts in the three vedas skilled in philology and grammar in recitation we are like our teachers a dispute has arisen between us gotama or the doctrine of birth paradwaj says this one is a brahmin by birth but i say one is such by action know this one with vision since neither of us was able to convince the other of our view we have come to ask you sir widely famed to be enlightened as when the moon becomes full people salute it with reverence so in the world when awaiting you they pay homage to gotama so now we ask gotama the i arisen in the world is one a brahma by birth or is one such by action explain to us who don't know how we should understand a brahmin the inherent distinction among other living beings i will explain to you both was it uh, said the blessed one in proper sequence as they are the generic division of living beings for their kinds differ from one another know the grass and the trees as well though they don't even make any claims their distinctive marks is produced by birth for their kinds differ from one another next come the moths and butterflies even though the various kinds of ants their distinctive mark is produced by birth for their kinds differ from one another then know the four footed beings the both small and large their distinctive mark is produced by birth for their kinds differ from one another know those whose bellies are their feet that is the serpents those long back creatures 
Their distinctive mark is produced by birth, for their kinds differ from one another. Know to the fish that dwell in water, whose range is the liquid depths. Their distinctive mark is produced by birth, for their kinds differ from one another. Next know the birds, who fly with their wings in the sky. Their distinctive mark is produced by birth, for their kinds differ from one another. Humans are not intrinsically different from each other. While among these many kinds of beings, their distinctive marks are determined by birth, among humans there are no distinctive marks produced by their particular birth. Not by their hairs or the head, not by ears or the eyes, not by the mouth or the nose, not by the lips or the brow, not by the neck or the shoulders, not by the belly or the back, not by the buttocks or the breast, not by the anus or the genitals, not by the hands or the feet, nor by the fingers or nails, not by knees or the thighs, nor by their color or voice. Birth does not make a distinctive mark as it does for the other kinds of beings. Separately among human beings, nothing distinctive is found in their bodies. Classification among human beings is spoken of by designation. How human differences are conventional. The one among humans who lives by husbandry, you should know Vasette, he is a farmer, not a Brahmin. The one among humans who earns his living by various crafts, you should know Vasette, he is a craftsman, not a Brahmin. The one among humans who lives by trade, you should know Vasette, he is a merchant, not a Brahmin. The one among humans who lives by serving others, you should know Vasit, is a servant, not a Brahmin. The one among humans who lives by stealing, you should know Vasit, is a thief, not a Brahmin. The one among humans who earns living by archery, you should know Vasit, is a warrior, not a Brahmin. The one among humans who lives by priestly service, you should know Vasit, is a priest, not a Brahmin. The one among humans who rules over the villages and realm, you should know Vasita is a king, not a Brahmin. The marks of a true Brahmin. I don't call someone a Brahmin based on a genealogy or the maternal origin. He is just a pompous speaker if he is impeded by things. One who owes nothing, taking nothing, he is the one I call a Brahmin. One who has cut off all fetters, who is not agitated, who has overcome all ties, detached, he is the one I call a Brahmin. One who has cut the strap and thong, the reins and bridle band as well, whose shaft is lifted and lightened, he is the one I call a Brahmin. One who, without hatred, endures insults, attacks and bondage, whose power is patience, a powerful truth, he is the one I call a Brahmin. One who is without anger, observant, of good behavior, without swellings, tamed, bearing his final body, he is the one I call a Brahmin. Like wood on a lotus leaf, or mustard seed on the point of an owl, one who does not cling to sensual pleasures, he is the one I call a Brahmin. One who understands right here, the destruction he is suffering for himself, whose burden is lowered, detached, he is the one I call a Brahmin. One of a deep wisdom, intelligent, skilled in the path and non-path, who has reached the supreme goal, he is the one I call a Brahmin. One who does not form bonds with their householders or homeless ones, who wanders without a boat or few desires, he is the one I call a Brahmin. One who, having put down the rod towards all beings frail and firm, does not kill or make others kill, he is the one I call a Brahmin. Not hostile among the hostiles, quenched among those who take up the rod, not taking among those who take, he is the one I call a Brahmin. One from whom lust and hatred, conceit and denigration have dropped away. 
like a mustard seed from the point of an owl, he is the one I called a Brahmin. One who utters no rough speech, whose speech is articulate and truthful, by which he does not hurt anyone, he is the one I called a Brahmin. One here who does not take anything in the world not given, long or short, subtle or gross, fine or plain, he is the one I called a Brahmin. One in whom there is no yearnings for the world and the next, without desire, detached, he is the one I called a Brahmin. One in whom there is no attachments, who through knowledge is rid of doubt, who has arrived at firm ground in the deathless, he is the one I called a Brahmin. One who here is transcendent ties, as well as both merit and evil, who is the rollers, dustless and pure, he is the one I called a Brahmin. One who is like the moon, stainless, pure, clear and limpid, for whom delight in existence is destroyed, he is the one I called a Brahmin. One who has passed beyond the swamp, the Maya, Sansara, delusion, a meditator who has crossed over, gone beyond, without impulse and rid of doubt, who has attained Nibbana through no clinging, he is the one I call a Brahmin. One here who has abundant sensual pleasures, who wanders without a home, with sensual desires and existence destroyed, he is the one I call a Brahmin. One here who has abundant craving, who wanders without a home, with craving and existence destroyed, he is the one I call a Brahmin. One who has discarded the human bond and transcended the celestial bond, fully detached from all bonds, he is the one I call a Brahmin. One who has discarded delight and discontent, become cool without acquisitions, a hero who has overcome the whole world, he is the one I call a Brahmin. One who completely knows the passing away and rebirth of beings, unstuck, fortunate, enlightened, he is the one I call a Brahmin. One whose destination they don't know, where Devas, Gandhavas or humans, an Arahant with influxes destroyed, he is the one I call a Brahmin. Before, after and in the middle, one for whom there is nothing at all, one who owns nothing, taking nothing, he is the one I call a Brahmin. The chief fool, the excellent hero, the great Rishi whose victory is won, without impulse, cleansed, enlightened, he is the one I call a Brahmin. One who knows his past abodes, who sees heaven and the plain of misery, who has read the destruction of birth, he is the one I call a Brahmin. Distinction are based on deeds. For the name and clan ascribed to one are a designation in the world. Having originated by the convention, they are ascribed here and there. For those who don't know this, wrong view has long been their tendency. It is just not knowing that they say, one is a Brahmin by birth. One is not a Brahmin by birth, nor by birth a non-Brahmin. By action one becomes a Brahmin, by action one becomes a non-Brahmin. One becomes a farmer by action. By action one becomes a craftsman. One becomes a merchant by action. By action one becomes a servant. One becomes a thief by action. By action one becomes a soldier. One becomes a priest by action. By action one becomes a king. The world goes round by action. So that is how the wise see action as it really is. Seers of defendant origination, skilled in action and its result. By karma the world goes around, by karma the population goes around. Sentient beings are fastened by karma, which is the linchpin of moving chariot. By austerity, by the spiritual life, by self-control and inner taming, by this one becomes a Brahmin. This is supreme Brahmanhood. One possessing the three clear knowledges, peaceful, for whom renewed existence is finished, know him thus, Vasetta, 
as brahma and sakka for those who understand when this was said the brahmin said unto vasit and varadavada said to the blessed one excellent master gautama excellent we now go for refuge to master gautama to the dhamma and to the sangha of bhikkhus let master gautama consider us lay followers who from today have gone for refuge for life